What's going on guys? Glad to see you back. In today's video, we're going to be checking out my top 5 favorite handguns. Now the guns that I've selected for this list aren't going to be in any particular order. Some of them I like because they hold sentimental value to me, and others I like just because they're fun to take to the range. Now before we get into this top 5 list, today's video is brought to you by Big Daddy Unlimited. Big Daddy Unlimited is an online buyer's club giving you access to guns, parts, gear, and ammo at a discounted price. A few of my favorite things over at Big Daddy Unlimited would be the Trijicon section as well as the Surefire section because those are products you just really don't see on sale a whole lot and Big Daddy Unlimited always has awesome prices on all of those products. Now the first link down in the video description titled 2A Buyers Club is going to be your link for Big Daddy Unlimited. Head over, check it out, see if it's something that fits your needs and I also want to give those guys a huge thank you for helping support the channel. Now that all that's out of the way, let's get into these top 5 guns. Now, the first gun that I have out here, and like I said, these are not going to be in any particular order. I just grabbed five, laid them out, and kind of grabbed the first gun, which is my Glock 19X. Now, the Glock 19X, when this gun first came out, I was even on the bandwagon of kind of making fun of it. Um, you know, why would they extend the grip but not extend the slide? Everybody wanted the shorter frame with the longer slide. Glock kind of came out with the opposite of that. And honestly, like I said, when it first came out, I did kind of joke around, you know, everybody was jumping on the bandwagon of making fun of the 19X, but I picked it up and this is a gun that I've really fallen in love with. Now, as far as customizations go, I really haven't done that much to this gun and I really didn't want to. I was gonna leave it all factory, but you know me, I just couldn't leave it alone. So we ended up putting a Landtech threaded barrel on here and this is a Texas Black Rifle Company compensator. Every time I post a picture of this gun, like on Instagram or Facebook, everybody's always asking me what kind of compensator is that? Well, it's a Texas Black Rifle Company or TBRC. They do not make this compensator anymore, so whenever I get asked about it, I always tell people to head over to Legion Precision. They make a few different models of compensators that come in at a really, really good price. Honestly, Legion Precision comps are the way to go in my opinion if you're not trying to break the bank. But anyways, this is a TBRC comp, awesome compensator. I've had it for a few years now. Moving down from there, this is a Ranger Proof Swag Trigger that was modified by Tactical Pontoon. And honestly, this is one of the smoothest, crispest triggers I've ever felt. And I don't even know if crispest is a word, but it is now because this trigger is pretty badass. Um, as far as customizations go, I do have a Surefire XH35 weapon light on here. This is pretty much like an upgraded model of the Surefire X300 with a few different modes on the bottom. You can throw it into high mode, low mode, strobe on or strobe off. Awesome light, it is a little pricey, but I really do like it for this build. Now the only other thing that I'm running on here that isn't factory is going to be this plus three or plus four base pad. I'm not sure where this came from, but I like it on this gun. I like this configuration and I've been throwing the idea around for probably like a year now of getting this slide cut for a Leupold Delta Point Pro or maybe an RMR. I just really don't know and the thing that's really holding me back there is the fact that I love this PVD coating that's on the Glock 19X slide. I really don't want to have to get it recoded, so I don't know. I'm still kind of throwing that idea around in my head. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Now let's move on to the next gun, which is going to be the Desert Eagle in 50 cal. Now this is a 50 AE beast, and this gun comes from Magnum Research. The Desert Eagle is a very, very famous gun. Chances are people that aren't even into firearms are at least gonna know what the Desert Eagle is, or maybe just heard the term. Well, this is a Desert Eagle, and it honestly made the list because it's a Desert Eagle in 50. Now this one here is a Mark 19 Desert Eagle, pretty much meaning it has a top rail, as well as a bottom Picatinny rail, and this model here is also compensated, which is really, really nice for the 50 AE. This thing shoots just about like a 44 mag, is how I try to explain it to people. I know I have a few buddies that I've taken out shooting, and a few of them wouldn't even shoot this gun. I'm out there one-handed with it, trying to show them that, hey, you know, it's not as bad as it looks, it's not as intimidating as it looks, but some people still just don't want nothing to do with this gun, and I could kind of see why. Another reason this gun made the list is I was able to go on the Magnum Research, build your own Desert Eagle website, and design this gun myself to my specifications, and it took me like three or four days to land on this configuration, and believe me, I wanted to go gold, I wanted to go gold tiger striped maybe, but I just feel like everybody does that, so I wanted to throw something together that I've never seen, 
and I ended up with this beauty right here. Now I had to go with 50AE because why wouldn't you if you're gonna get a Desert Eagle? I have had a Desert Eagle in 44 mag before, but it wasn't the most reliable system, so I ended up trading it off for maybe like, a, I think it was a Smith & Wesson 500, and I got rid of that too. But here we are with the Desert Eagle 50AE. I don't think I'll ever get rid of this gun. It just means a lot to me. It has some sentimental value, and then it just has the cool factor of being a Desert Eagle. Now one really cool feature that I do wanna mention about the Desert Eagle, is the bolt back here. Now this bolt looks very similar to another bolt on a rifle that is very popular, and that would be the AR-15 or M16 bolt. Now these things are pretty much identical. The Desert Eagle bolt has four lugs plus the ejector, or an AR-15 bolt or M16 bolt has seven lugs plus the ejector. So there are slight differences, but with this gun having that bolt and the gas system, the recoil really isn't as bad as a lot of people would think. So let's move on to number three. Now the third gun on the list is going to be the Sig Sauer P226 Legion. Now I've had just about every variation of the 226. I really love the 226 Combat. I really love the Mark 25, but the Legion may be at the top of my 226 list. Now if you guys can't tell, the name of the channel, GlockGuy226, it was actually an email address I created like years and years ago before I even thought of doing YouTube, and it was because I liked Glocks and I love 226s, and when I made my YouTube account with Google, I kind of just stuck with that email, and here we are today. But people do ask, you know, what's the 226 for? Obviously it's for the SIG 226. But the Legion is probably my favorite variation, as I mentioned. Um, a few reasons for that. This gun does come with the short reset trigger straight from SIG. You can have this trigger put in any other SIG out there. If you want to order it, put it in yourself or send your gun to SIG and SIG's Armory will put it in. But this thing is very, very smooth. It also comes with the SIG Sour X-Ray Night Sights, which these will probably be really hard for you guys to pick up. I have a light pointing right at myself. Um, big green tritium post in the front or a tritium post with a big green dot around it I should say and I've always been a big fan of SIG's night sights But these SIG x-ray sights are probably some of the nicest sights I've seen come on a factory gun now I'm also running a surefire x300 weapon light on here. You can't go wrong with an x300. They're just well proven lights um, This gun does have g10 grips with the little legion logo in them it also has the Legion logo on the top of the slide right back here. And I do like that this gun comes with at least semi front serrations. And I mean that because they're not all the way up on the slide, but it is enough where you can still get on there and get a little bit of grip on the front of the slide. Now besides that, this gun is in single action only, which most of your 226s out there are gonna be double action, single action. So that was a little bit of a learning curve and it kind of still is to be honest. When you're used to running Glocks or like polymer frame SIGs or polymer Smiths, you're not typically used to running your 1911 style safety, but this gun here has been a pleasure to shoot. I really, really do like this gun, and I've been trying to spend a lot more time with it at the range. I do run this in an OWB holster from T-Rex Arms on a battle belt drop leg setup, and this thing is just an amazing performer. I've had zero issues with it. So this is a gun that I don't think I'm ever gonna get rid of, and I would like to have a few different variations of the 226 again, but I think the Legion is here to stay. Now let's go ahead and jump into number four. Now the fourth gun we're gonna be checking out is the first fully custom Glock that I ever completed, and this is a Gen 4 Glock 19 Loki Tactical Slide, which Loki Tactical is no longer cutting slides anymore. Chris and Ryan of Loki split up. I know Chris is still running Loki. I believe he's doing like stippling and Cerakote work, which he does an awesome job, but I am very, very thankful that I was able to get this Uncle Gaspacho slide before they split up. Now the slide and compensator do match up. They are a pretty sick little combo. The compensators from Loki Tactical, it is called their Ant Crostini comp, which they no longer make. The slide is called the Uncle Gaspacho, and I am running a Shadow Systems fluted titanium nitrided barrel in here. I've been running it in this gun for a couple years now, and I've never had any issues. We're running a Trigicon RMR Type 2 on top in flat dark earth. I'm running some suppressor height sights from XS, and these are their big dot sights. These are the only pair of big dots that I have, but I really do like them, especially in the suppressor height configuration. Moving down from there, just a factory Glock Gen 4 frame that I stippled with a micro dot pattern. I personally love the micro dot pattern, but if you shoot your gun enough, you are gonna have to re-hit it every maybe six months to a year. Just kind of refreshing that stipple, give it a little more grip. But this gun has been great. This thing runs like a champ. 
As far as the trigger, I'm running an Agency Arms trigger in here. We do have an Olight PL2 Valkyrie, and I do really like these weapon lights. I believe this model is either 800 or 1000. It's one of the two, and it does have the quick detach lever. That is one thing, I'm always swapping lights on different guns, so I really like that it does have the quick detach lever. I'm running an extended slide lock, slide release, whatever you want to call it. I have gotten really used to running the extendeds on all my Glocks. As far as the magazine release, I am running a Hive Technologies magazine release. And what I really like about this is it is a metal mag release, so you get a ton of grip on there. It feels great on the gun. Moving down, we're running a Magpul GI Magwell, and these things are great for the money. I think you can order these for like $20 to $25 shipped to your door, and you just really can't beat that for a quality Magwell. Now I'm also running a plus three, maybe even plus four base pad on here, and that is my Glock 19 Gen 4. This build's special to me. I will never ever get rid of this. I do wish Loki Tactical was still in business so you guys could get some of their cool products but this is one that will definitely not be leaving. Now last but certainly not least, this is my 1969 Colt Diamondback 22 LR revolver. Now this gun is unfired, it is in amazing condition. I do not have the box unfortunately, but the biggest reason this gun is so sentimental to me is because this belonged to my wife's grandfather. Now I was never able to meet my wife's grandfather, he passed away like right when I was meeting my wife, she had to come back for his funeral. But great guy, I've heard nothing but great things about him, and he was a pretty avid gun collector as well. Now my wife's uncle ended up with most of his guns, and this was actually a duplicate of what he had in his collection, so my wife's uncle made a deal with me that he would sell it to me as long as it never left the family, and I was 100% cool with that. This will one day be passed on to our kids so they'll have one of their great grandfather's guns, and let alone the fact that it is an unfired 1969 Colt Diamondback. Now, I'm going to get a little closer, see if you guys can get some clean shots of this. I, I just really want you guys to see how clean this gun is. I just can't decide if this is something that I want to shoot eventually and clean and put up or not. I know about a year ago, I posted a picture of this on Instagram and I had 22 Plinkster comment and say, man, you know, that is one of my grail guns, the Diamondback 22 and he got one just about maybe two or three months ago and I did see he posted a video where he went out and shot it and said I'm gonna clean it, put it in the safe and never shoot it again. I'm very very tempted to take this thing out at least once, uh, maybe let the kids put a few rounds through it, let the wife put a few rounds through it, clean it and put it up because I don't ever plan on selling it. I know it holds its most value in this unfired condition but I would really, really love to fire a few rounds out of it. So let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. And I do not have the box for this, which kind of takes away from the collector aspect just a little bit. But either way, I absolutely love this thing and this gun will never ever leave the family. So very cool piece here. I would love to add to my snake collection one of these days. But for now, this is the only snake gun that I currently have. But I think that's gonna wrap it up on my top five favorite handguns video. Guys, I really do appreciate you stopping by. I plan on shooting my top five favorite rifles video probably sometime here in the next few days. So definitely be on the lookout for that. And as always, thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate you stopping by. Catch you guys in the next one.